So I've got a buddy in Little Rock, Arkansas, which a lot of y'all know that's kind of where I grew up, or it is where I grew up. And uh, Scott was a, became, we became good friends in high school and through college and done a lot of fun things together over the years. And I told him one day, I said, buddy, I said, you are my dirt road. And he said, uh, what do you mean I'm your dirt road? And I said, well, I said, uh, when's the last time you were on a dirt road? And he said, well, let me think about it. He goes, uh, you know, three months ago. And I said, where were you going? He goes, we were going to hunt. And I said, before that, where were you going? He goes, well, we were going out to this place to go riding around on four wheelers in the mud. And I said, anywhere you go on a dirt road, you're going there for fun. And he got a big smile on his face. And I said, anytime you call me, it's not what are we doing. All it is is where do I need to be? Because you're my dirt road. We do things fun together. And I wish we could see each other more. But let me tell you something. You tell a friend he's your dirt road, that's a compliment. Or she's your dirt road as far as that goes. So we're on a dirt road. We're going to do something fun this morning. Well, I believe we see civilization over the top of this next rise, so the lake's 14 feet low. <clears throat> Hopefully, their boat ramp here is going to let me put in, and I didn't just go a couple miles down a dirt road and turn around and go back a couple miles back the other way on the dirt road. But, well, maybe it's just a metal building. <laughs> there goes another deer across the road. Lake's 14 feet low. A lot of stuff sticking out of the water. I would imagine you Central Texas guys are gonna be pretty comfortable with the look of the lake. It, it looks and feels a lot like some of that stuff down there. But I'm gonna just ride for a little bit. I've done an embarrassingly small amount of homework. So I'm just gonna go look and ride and look at the graph and see what I see and I'm gonna probably not fish for the first 30 or 45 minutes I really want to look get a sense of what's going on the lake's not that big so I can run a bunch of the lake and that's what I'm gonna do you know as I'm idling away from the ramp one of the things I realized I needed to do was adjust my map so the lake's down 14 feet and and this is so handy on the hummingbird Now it gives me a much better sense of the lake. Here we go. Well, these flats down by the dam have a, a kind of a grass. It's not hydrilla, but it's a kind of a thorny grass over them. And I'm throwing a swim bait over the top of it on a on a, a, a owner swimmy head. And I keep I, I lost. I caught a couple of little fish, lost a couple of little fish, but I kept getting the tail bit off of it. And I said to myself, I know what that is. I'm finna put the hurting on them. So what's this? I kept having these bull brim bite my swim bait. That's the first cast with the rooster tail. Look at the size of that thing. I mean, that thing is just, that's a great big brim. Golly, bigger than my hand. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, there are times I just am a little kid who wants to catch a fish. That was the very first cast.
that was the very next cast and that was about a three pounder it got down and broke me off unreal unbelievable two casts two bites in that clear stuff Some better fish in that. I've seen several good ones. Well, that nuked it. Oh, he come off. Oh, no, he got it. Buddy's with him. Knocked it up in the air, come back and got it. Every time I pull one of those to the boat, there's two or three with him. Those are just solid pound and three quarter fish. Beautiful. So if you don't use them much, uh, GoPros will overheat anytime it gets over about 95 degrees and it was over 100 this day and I don't know how many fish I caught on top water right there but this was the second or third to last one I called and you can see it was a dandy. Um, <laughs> so they they quit schooling, uh, they went down and I was, I was chasing them around with the live scope but I couldn't get them to bite so I finally picked up my Carolina rig. And uh, I was not done on the main lake once I picked up that Carolina rig. And them fish are so strong, they just dig and dig. This fish ain't no size at all. Strong, strong, strong. I've been, I've been throwing a 
brush hog deep and hadn't been getting bit. And I started seeing what these guys are eating. It's a little bitty. So I dropped down to a little finesse worm. We'll show you. I'll show you what this little guy just parked up when I swung him in the boat. That's why they're not eating that bigger bait. They're eating a little bitty, little bitty shad. A little bitty shad. I'm not real sure what that is, guys. I know there's those cross between long, large mouse and small mouse in here. I think that's just a large mouth, but I'm really not sure looking at him because of his color. First drop with that thing. Look at that, though. That is a chunk of a little fish. He ain't very long. He'll keep. He's probably 14 and a half inches. A chunk. First drop. Oh, I lost my sinker. That burnt. 